So in this section, we're going to take a look at substitution with indefinite integrals officially. So we're going to do all sorts of, we've already introduced substitution, um, where we need to get a, a complicated equation to be simplified, right? And so we're substituting in a variable. And, and really what we're doing is just the reverse of the chain rule, right? Because if we have y equals f of u, then y prime would be f prime at u u prime and we're just we're just going backwards right we're going to find out what u is we're going to as we've practiced in the past we're going to let u be that and we're going to get back to y equaling f of u right so let's go ahead and just practice some this is another way to say that um, but let's go ahead and like i say we've introduced this so let's go ahead and run through some examples So we've got x squared minus 9 cubed 2x dx. And so let's say they didn't tell us what u should be. If I'm looking at this, then hopefully I'm thinking to myself, well, whatever I let u be, its derivative has got to show up there. Right? And it's usually like the inside part. I always say it's the inside part. So hopefully you're thinking, well, let's let u be that x squared minus 9y. Well, what's the derivative of u? Two x, right? But then we take the two x to the other side. So du is two x dx. So you see how we have that two x dx. There's our du right there. There's our du. So what we have is u. There's our u. u is x squared minus 9. u is being cubed. So it cleans up real nicely for us. It's all about finding who u is, right? So we got u cubed du, and then we have no issues. We can go ahead and run that antiderivative u to the fourth over 4 plus a constant. Make sure you throw u back in. u is x squared minus 9. All right, and if you notice, if you took if you took this uh, derivative here, right, you'd get back to that original function there. All right, how about this one? And I'm going to pretend for a minute, let's say they didn't give you that. A lot of the time you want to start with the inside. So let's just say, hey, what if we let u be 1 over x. In other words, u is x to the negative 1. Then du dx be negative 1, x to the negative 2. And take the dx to the other side. So du is negative 1 over x squared dx. Okay. So what do we have? Well, if you notice... Our u is right here. Here's our u. And then our du is negative 1 over x squared dx. I have 1 over x squared dx. I don't have negative. So i got to throw in a negative, which means i got to offset it with a negative out front to keep it the same thing. So here's my negative 1 over x squared dx. There's my du. And we have cosine squared of u on this, right? And so then at this point, I say, well, gosh, it would be nice if I had an equation for integrating the cosine squared of u, but we don't. So I'm going to have to look at my trig sheet, and, and there's a power reducing formula. that says uh, cosine squared of theta is 1 plus cosine 2 theta all divided by 2. And that's what I'm going to use on this. So I have negative and I have cosine. Oops. I'm going to replace that cosine squared with 1 plus cosine of 2, except I'm u in this case, all over 2. 
Okay. And if you notice on this, um, I have, let me write it this way. And then that negative, this goes through to both of these. Okay. Now I don't have just a u, I have a cosine of two u. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do a, a second dose of u substitution with that two u. I'm gonna let u, I'm gonna let v, I'll call it v, be two u. So dv is two du. Let me take the negative through to both of those. And so if V is 2 du, I need a 2. I need a 2 du. I need a 2 du. So I got an offset of the 1 half. So notice my 2 du, there's my dv. So let me come over here. I've kind of made a mess of this. And then I have, and I'm going to multiply the 1 half and 1 half. So minus 1 fourth. And notice I have 2 cosine 2u du. So my 2 du, there's my dv, and I have cosine 2u, 2u is the v. So now I can now I can finish this. I have negative, I integrate the 1 half, that's the 1 half u, then minus 1 fourth, the integration with a cosine is sine, and this will be sine of v. All right, uh, plus our constant, so we got negative. Now let's plug uh, the u in. If you remember, the u was 1 over x minus 1 fourth sine. Now the v was the 2u, but I got to plug the u in as well. And our u is the 1 over x. So I get negative 1 over 2x uh, minus 1 fourth sine of 2 over x plus our constant on that. Okay. All right, let's look at this next one here. We've got uh, our u. Now, if you have a denominator, it's usually your denominator or whatever's inside, in this case of the radical there. So in this case, it's inside the radical. So I'm going to let u be that 16 minus x cubed. So du dx, again, take the dx to the other side, be negative 3x squared dx. Notice I have x squared dx. I do not have negative 3x squared. So I give it a negative 3, and I offset it with a negative 1 third. Now I have negative 3x squared dx. Now I have du. So I have the negative 1 third. I have 1 over the square root of u. du. In other words, u to the negative a half du. So I got negative one third, and now let's go ahead and integrate that u to the negative a half plus one is one half all over one half plus a constant. So I got negative two thirds squared of u plus a constant. Now let's plug our u in.
So this next one, we're going to go ahead, we're going to take uh, that U to be the inside right there, that radicand. Again, it's usually a radicand or a denominator, or the radicand in the denominator is typically how it'll work out for you. So du, dx, so the derivative of 1 is 0, so I just got a 1 eighth, 4x to the third. So du is 4 eighths, or 1 half x to the third dx, right? So I need a 1 half. Here, let's see what we have. We have x to the third, 8 dx. I need a 1 half x cubed. Well, I have a 1 half x cubed dx. I have an x cubed dx. I don't have 1 half x cubed dx. Now I do, but i got to offset the 1 half with a 2. Once again, 2 times 1 half is just 1, right? I'm just multiplying this by 1. So i got 2. Integral, and I've got this 1 half x cubed dx. There's my du part. And then I got the squared. I called that u, that 1 plus x to the fourth over 8. So we just have 2, the integration of u to the 1 half du. So we got 2 uh, u to the 3 halves all over 3 halves plus a constant. So we got 2 times 2 thirds, which is 4 thirds u to the 3 halves plus a constant, so we got 4 thirds u, which is 1 plus x to the 4th over 8 to the 3 halves plus a constant. Let's move on to the next one here. This one, notice I have a sine 2x on the top. I have a cosine cubed 2x on the bottom. So what you're usually going to do is let your bottom be the denominator, be the u. So, And I don't want it to be cosine cubed. I'm just going to let it be cosine of 2x. Because I know the derivative of the cosine is negative sine. So I'll have that top, right? So that's kind of my plan is I want to let u be just the bottom. So du dx would be derivative of cosine negative sine 2x. Chain rule, derivative of 2x is 2. So du is negative 2 sine of 2x dx. Negative 2 sine of 2x dx. So here's what we have. I need a negative 2 sine of 2x dx. I need a negative 2 sine of 2x dx. So i got to offset it with a negative a half. Now you can see my du right there. So I have negative a half. Um, all that junk is my du. And then I just got 1 over u cubed because my u is that cosine of 2x, but u is being cubed. right? So it cleans up real nice. And now I'm like, oh, yeah, I can do that. So I got negative a half, u, negative 3 plus 1, negative 2, all over negative 2, plus a constant, negative over a negative is a positive. So I just got the 1 fourth, 1 over 4 u squared plus a constant. So I got 1 over 4, what was my u? My u is the cosine of 2x cosine squared of 2x because the u is being squared plus a constant. Again, you always know if you did it right, if you take that derivative, it'll take you back to the original, right? There's always your check on these if you want to check them. So as you're thinking through these, hopefully you're looking at these and, and thinking, <clears throat> whatever I let u be, in this case, tangent 1 minus x, I need its derivative to show up. Derivative 1 minus x, again, chain rule is negative 1. So du is negative secant squared 1 minus x dx, right? That's my du. So here's what we have. Uh, 
I need a negative secant squared dx, which means I got to offset it. Notice my negative secant squared d, dx is right there. So there's my du. And then I have tangent to the seventh. So that's my u to the seventh is what this uh, ends up being, right? So now we can integrate it. So see how it cleaned up real nice for us. <clears throat> so we leave the negative there. u to the 7 plus 1 is 8 over the 8 plus the constant. Now we throw the u in, which was uh, tangent of 1 minus x. This is to the 8. Or in other words, uh, you could also write that negative 1 8 tangent to the 8. 6 plus a constant. Uh, looking at this one, hopefully you're thinking, let's try that. The inside of that thing. I don't want to let I don't want to let it be sine of that because then I'd have a cosine. I have no cosine here, right? So I'm going to let it be that uh, 1 over x squared, so x to the negative 2 minus 7, because I know du is negative 2x to the negative 3 dx. In other words, du is negative 2 over x to the third dx. So I need a negative 2 over x to the third. Well, here's what I have. I need a negative 2 over x to the third. Well, I have a 1. I need a negative 2 over x to the third dx. So I introduced negative 2. So i got to offset it with a negative a half. So I have, and there's my, again, here's my du part. And so I just have the sine of u, right? I let that 1 over x squared minus 7 be my u. And now we run the integral. So the constant stays there. I run the integration of the sine, which is actually negative cosine, the integration. So I have one half cosine u plus a constant, and then throw my u in. Throw the u in. All right, let's go ahead and use our u sub with uh, these for these inverse trig functions. So notice um, here I've got uh, the integration of four over one plus nine x squared, and so I'm going to use this one right here in yellow, right there. Notice it matches uh, that form. And let me write it this way. So I have four. I'm going to push the four out front. And I have one, which is one squared. A is a number. And nine x squared, that's the same as three x squared dx, right? Because again, this is. 1 over a squared plus u squared is 1 over a, the arc tangent. It's actually the absolute value of u, I believe. No, it's not. It's just u. Yeah. No, absolutely wrong. Uh, plus our constant, right? So I've got to let my u be that 3x. So du ends up being 3dx. So I need a 3, so I have 3dx, which means i got to offset it with a 1 -third. So what do we have? We have 4 thirds. I have a 3 over 1 plus 3x squared dx. And notice we have the 3dx. There's our du. And we have... 1 plus u squared. So hopefully you notice that's our a, of course that's our u right there. So this will just end up being 4 thirds, 4 thirds, and then I'm following this, 1 over a, 1 over a, a is 1, arc tangent of u over a plus a constant. So we got 4 thirds arc tangent of u, which is just 3x over 1, plus a constant. So 4 thirds arctangent of 3x. It's a constant. That's how you want to approach those with u substitution. Let's do another one here. Uh, but this time, uh, notice I don't have 
any perfect square here. <clears throat> let me let me go back up here and so you're like, oh gosh, how could I get this uh, to, to be in, in the proper form? I'm still going to try and force it into this one there, but I'm going to need, all right, so that's the one I'm, I'm wanting to use here. I'm wanting to use, let me write it down. I'm trying to get it to fit this form. One over A arc tangent u over a plus a constant well what could we do well we could complete the square let me push that 13 out to the side for a minute and say well what do i need to put in here to make that a perfect square square well I'd, i would always take the b term over two and square it so that's four over two squared which is two so i need I need to add in two square four, which means I got to offset it minus four, right? And so that will then factor x squared plus four x plus four. That'll factor into x plus two x plus two. And then I got 13 minus four is the nine. And so here's my, here's my u part. And there's my a par so the a is three right this is like three squared so my a is the three so i'm going to let u be x plus two so du is just a dx so no problem there and so this just becomes one over u squared plus three squared du so again, a is 3. So I got 1 over a arc tangent of u, arc tangent of u over a uh, plus a constant. So that cleans up to 1 third arc tangent, or u here was the x plus 2 all over the 3 plus a constant. Okay. Let's do uh, let's do one more here. I've got uh, arc sine of uh, x over three cubed, all divided by square root of nine minus x squared. Um, if we let, well, first of all, do you hopefully if you don't, then you look on your table. If you remember the derivative of the arc sine of u is 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared times u prime. Chain rule on that. So that's what we're going to actually try for our u, is we're going to let it be the arc sine this time. And so du um, would be, or du dx, 1 over the square root of 1 minus the u, which is x over 3 squared times u prime. The derivative of 1 third x is just 1 third. Okay, so this is 1 third over the square root of 1 minus uh, x squared over 9. Or if you want to take the 1 third, it's 1 third times, or 1 over 3 times the square root of 1 minus x squared over 9. Let me get a common denominator. So that's 9 minus x squared all over 9. So that's square to the top over the square to 9. Well, square to 9's cancel. So I've actually got 1 over the square to 9 minus x squared dx. That's my du. And so if you go back to, so this is number 1. Let's go back to our problem we had the arc sine of x over 3 cubed over the square root of 9 minus x squared dx. And hopefully you see there's my du. There's my du. And so I'm just left with my u, the arc sine of x over 3, my u being cubed. 
So that cleans up real nice for us. And we end up with u to the fourth over four plus a constant. Go ahead and put your u back in. That's the arc sine of x over three to the fourth over four plus a constant. How about the natural log? If you remember the integration one over x is the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c, there it is, um, with the u, right? So if I'm doing this one, um, I'm thinking to myself, if I let u be my bottom, then I'd have 3x squared plus 6x dx. Let me write that another way. That's 3x. Uh, times x plus 2 dx. That's the same thing, right? So if I look at this, I'm like, oh gosh, I got x and x plus 2 in my numerator. I don't have 3x, so I just got to give it a 3 and offset it with a 1 -third. So I have 1 -third, 3x, x plus 2, again, there's my du. Right, so we got 1 over u. And I know the integration of 1 over u is the natural log of the absolute value. So this just ends up being the natural log of the absolute value of u. Well, u is x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4. Here again, I would let my u be the denominator. So du would be derivative of 6 is 0, derivative of the 3 tangent 2 is 3, derivative of the tangent so secant squared, and take that dt over, and I have 3 secant squared t perfectly. There's my du. So this is just 1 over that u, du. So we got natural log of u plus a constant, which is the natural log of 6 plus 3 tangent of t, plus a constant. Uh, here we've got uh, 1 plus, I'm going to let that u be that 1 plus x to the 1 third is my bet on u. And so du would be derivative of 1 is 0, I got 1 third x to the negative two-thirds dx. Let me write that another way. That's 1 over 3x to the two-thirds dx, right? And so all I'm missing is a 3 down here. And so i got to give it a 3 on the top, right? So I have 3 integration. And you notice here's my du. So you have three integration, and I've got one over, and if you notice, there's my u. So three natural log of u plus a constant, which is three, the natural log of one plus x to the one third, or the third root of x is the same thing, plus a constant. Uh, here there's, you know, if you let u be that x minus 2, if you notice, then du is just dx, and it doesn't get you anywhere, and you're like, gosh, what do I do with that dang numerator, right? So your your option with this, and, and even if we let the, the numerator be the u, it doesn't get us anywhere either. And so what we need to do is we need to use long division to separate this out to break this into separate expressions. So I just go to the side. I'm going to take that 2x squared plus 7x minus 3. I'm going to go ahead and divide it by x minus 2. So what times x gives me 2x squared? You say 2x. Multiply it through 2x times x, 2x squared. 2x times that negative 2 is a negative 4x. Don't forget to change those signs. Now we got 7x plus 4x is 11x. 
bring down that minus 3. Now I'm matching the 11x. So I'm thinking what times x gives me 11x. Hopefully you say 11. So 11 times x is 11x. 11 times negative 2 is negative 22. Don't forget to change those signs. And so you got negative 3 plus 22 is a remainder of 19. And so you can write this as quotient, answer, plus remainder over that divisor, x minus 2 dx. Okay. And now if you notice, we can actually go ahead and integrate this. Let me break it up into 2x plus 11 dx, and then I'll break it up into 19 over x minus 2 dx. If I let u be x minus 2, then du is just a dx. And so what I have is, let me push the 19 out front. I have the integration of that plus 19 and this 1 over u, du. And now let's go ahead and let's go ahead and integrate that thing. So I got 2x squared over 2 plus 11x plus 19 stays there, natural log of u plus a constant. So I have x squared plus 11x plus 19, the natural log of u plus a constant. Uh, similarly on this one, you guys, you're just stuck. Even if I let u be the bottom, it doesn't get us anywhere. u the top, doesn't get us anywhere. We've got to do this long division. So 3x cubed minus this x squared plus x minus 2 divided by x squared. Put in a placeholder, 0x plus 2. I'm matching 3x cubed. So I know 3x times x is 3x cubed. 3x times 0, 0x squared, 3x times 2, 6x. Don't forget to... Subtract that, change those signs. So you got negative x squared minus 0x squared, negative x squared, x minus 6x is a negative 5x. You bring down the minus 2. Now I'm matching negative x squared. So I know negative 1 times x squared is a negative x squared. Negative 1 times 0x is a 0x. Negative 1 times 2 is a negative 2. And hopefully you don't forget to change those signs. That's gone. And we have a negative 5x, and that's gone. So there's our remainder. Uh, that negative 5x. And so this will be rewritten as quotient, 3x minus 1, plus remainder. Well, let me do it all at once here. Remainder over that divisor, x squared plus 2. And then I'm going to write that as 3x minus 1 dx plus... And we're going to let our u be that denominator, that x squared plus 2. So du would be 2x dx. So let me push that negative 5 out front. Because I need a 2x dx, which means I've got to offset it right there. So we have the integration of 3x minus 1 dx minus 5 halves. And hopefully you see that 2x dx, there's our du, and 1 over x squared plus 2, that's 1 over u. And now we can run it. 3x squared over 2 minus x minus 5 halves, the natural log of u, plus a constant. So we got 3x squared over 2 minus uh, x. Minus 5 halves the natural log of u. u is that uh, x squared plus 2, which actually don't need the absolute value because that's always positive. And there we go. Even the tangent. Let's say if you didn't know what the integration of the tangent was, you didn't have your sheet with you, um, hopefully you remember that tangent is the sine over the cosine. And you could let u be the cosine. So du would be negative sine. And all you need is a negative, so you got to offset it. So you've got negative, there's your negative sine x dx, there's your du, and you've got 1 over u. And so you got negative natural log of u plus a constant. In other words, negative natural log of the cosine plus a constant. That's what the integration of the tangent is. It's negative natural log of the absolute value of the cosine 
plus constants. So notice that we did it with u substitution. If you didn't have your formula sheet, now you know what that is with just some u uh, substitution there. Here's our list of our six trig functions, their integrals, right? Of course, we just did the tangent one, but let's go ahead and run through a, a few of these with some u substitution. So let's go ahead and let u be that uh, one half x or x over two. So du would be one half dx. So we just need a one half dx, right? So I got to offset it with a two. So notice our one half dx. There's our du. So we have two integration of the secant of u du, and then we know the integration of the secant. The integration of the secant right there is the natural log of the secant of u, which is x over 2, secant of u, plus the tangent of u, which is x over 2. That's our constant. Let's do one with a cosecant uh, plus a cotangent. Okay. So here I would go ahead and take the integration of the cosecant, which is negative ln, so this one up here. So I can split this up, right? Negative co, take the integration of that one and the integration of that one. So I have negative ln cosecant of theta plus cotangent of theta. Plus, now I just take the integration of the cotangent, which is ln of sine of u, or sine of theta in this case, and then plus a constant. Now hopefully you remember your log properties. If you remember natural log of u over v is the natural log of u minus the natural log of v. You remember that? Quotient property there, unique to logarithms. So let me let me actually write this this way. Let me put that one first minus that next one. So I have ln and I have it. So using this, right, except I'm going that way, I'm, I'm condensing the expression. I would have the sine of theta on the top. I would have that cosecant theta plus cotangent theta on uh, the bottom there, uh, plus a constant. And I could put the whole thing in absolute values. So sine theta over cosecant. Let me go ahead. This will simplify for us. Cosecant's one over sine. Cotangent's cosine over sine. And so we have sine of theta over one plus cosine theta all over sine theta. So if I multiply by the reciprocal, I'll have sine squared over one plus cosine theta. And if you remember, sine squared, right? The Pythagorean theorem says sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So sine squared would be one minus cosine squared. Well, that'll actually factor. One minus, co that's difference of squares. See how that one plus cosine theta cancels. So you're just left with the natural log of one minus cosine theta plus a constant. So it cleans up real nicely uh, for you on that one. Uh, when you've got this transcendental with e, a lot of the time it's that uh, expo exponential portion of the e. So I'm going to go ahead and try that first. I'm going to let u be that cosine squared up there. I'm going to let u be cosine squared theta. So my du would be 2 cosine theta. Now I'm to 1 power. But then the derivative of the cosine is negative sine. And so du is actually negative 2. Um, let me write it as sine cosine. And you've got, do you remember um, the double angle formula that said the sine of 2u 
is two sine u cosine u, right? So hopefully you notice you've got uh, the negative, but then you've got that two sine u cosine u. So that's the sine of two, in this case, theta. And of course, we've got our d theta. Okay, so forget about those two. So what do we have here? Let me write the original. And I have negative sine 2 theta d theta. I just need a negative, so i got to offset that. And notice my negative sine 2 theta d theta right there. There's my du. And I've got e to the u. Right? So now I'm just running uh, the integral of e to the u. Well, if you remember, the integral of a to the x dx is 1 over ln of a, a to the x, plus a constant. So it's negative 1 over ln of e, e to the u, plus a constant. Well, ln of e is just 1, so it's just negative 1 over 1. So negative e to the u, which in this case is cosine squared theta, uh, plus a constant. Commentary, you know, what we've done up to this point is we've been able to cancel everything out. We just have u. In other words, it was real clean for us. Uh, sometimes it's not perfectly clean, and so that's when you want to do a little bit of change of variables. And so, as you might expect, the u is best left to be that 1 minus x on this problem. And so our du is a negative dx, and that's really our best option. But if you notice what we have here... Is sure I can put in a negative dx and offset it right here's my negative dx so there's my du part but the problem is I'm like gosh what do I do with this dang x right there right Th this part is a u to the fourth that's not a problem I got u to the fourth but what I'm left with is this stupid x right there well the nice thing about this is if you'll notice since this u is a very basic 1 minus x, gosh, if I solve for x, I could put x in terms of u. x is 1 minus u. Let me throw that in. Boom, right there. And so what we'll have is, Notice when I distribute this, now I can integrate that, right? So see that trick there? Sometimes if it's not quite clean, you may have to like take your u sub part and solve for the other variable and put that x variable in terms of u, and it'll work out for you like this scenario. So we got negative, now I run it, negative u to the fifth over five, and then minus u to the sixth over six, plus a constant. So we got u, negative u to the fifth over five, plus u to the sixth over six, plus a constant. Our u was that one minus x. Let's try one more like that. Let's let our u be, as you might expect, it's going to be the radicand in our denominator here. Let's let u be that x plus 4. So du is just a 1 dx. Okay. And so let's see what we have here. So I'd have, um, that would be u. And du is dx, so that can be a du. And I still have this 2x plus 1 that I don't know what to do with, right? And so we'll again go to the side and say, well, since u is x plus 4, then x would just be u minus 4, right? If I solve that 
equation for x, x is u minus 4. And so I throw that in for that x right there. And so this will become 2 uh, u minus 4. So I got uh, 2u minus 8 plus 1 over square root of u, or 2u minus 7 over square root of u, or 2u over square root of u minus 7 over square root of u du. Uh, u to the 1 over u to the 1 half, so we just got 2u to the 1 half minus 7u to the negative 1 half. And what do you know? The stupid thing actually integrates. So we go ahead and integrate it. 2u to the 1 half plus 1, 3 halves all over the 3 halves minus 7u negative a half plus 1 is a 1 half all over that 1 half plus a constant. So we got 4 thirds u to the 3 halves minus 14 u to the 1 half plus our constant. And our u, what was our u? Our u was x plus 4. So we got 4 thirds x plus 4 to the 3 halves minus 14 x plus 4 to the 1 half, square root of x plus 4, in other words, plus a constant. So that's a nice cleanup for our change of variables. Well, I hope that's a good, nice variety of problems. Hope to get you guys started on this. Thanks for taking notes. See you next time.